got you. Yes. Awesome. Hi, can you see me okay? Yeah, I was explaining before that you are a very, you know, fit and chips. You're, you know, you're top of your game in fitness. You're all about keeping fit. You're all about the bone density, you know, the weight bearing, the kettlebell, keeping the body really fit during menopause and perimenopause. And fit and chips, I know that you're in Texas, but you are. I am, I am, home of the brave. <laughs> but you are from the north of England. That's why. Yeah, Middlesbrough, actually. If anyone's listening and knows, um, it's Middlesbrough, but Billingham, really. I mean, that's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, fit and chips was appropriate. That's why, for, for, for you being in Texas, I wanted them to make sense that the fit and chips was you were still keeping your English roots. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very I'm, much, yeah, very much I English, know. yeah. <laughs> and when you're over here, you always say you want to stay here. No, I know, I know. I do, I do. But, I but then when I you do, get I back there, to... Yeah, you know what? My kids have never, like, they visit England with me, and my husband's Scottish, but they're American and Canadian. So, so my life is here. Your life is, yeah, is definitely there. So, um, so the story is, I just think it's really good to, to speak to someone, someone that I really truly love and respect, and I know that you're going to tell it as it is, because, yeah. you know what, I didn't really know, and then I just looked at your Instagram, and I saw your partner and, and walking these small steps up the road, and it really affected me because it's not just like, you know, you have COVID and you get over it. It's your lung capacity, like, was like, you know, went right down, didn't it, to, you know, like, I don't know, I suppose if you say you're going to breathe into one of those machines, you know, how far could you actually breathe? Did they make you ever do that? No, not yet. Not I am going to go and okay. see. I am going to go and see a pulmonologist. So, like, just to give like an outline, you. I think I yeah, don't know what you said, story, Gina, but I want you to talk. Go on, speak away. Please. I'm a fourteen, so I um believe that I we had a March break um towards the end of March. It's a bit like half term. Yeah. And uh, we decided as a family to do stay at home. It wasn't enforced then, but the school closed down. So we cancelled all of our March break plans and we stayed at home. But I was the one going out and, um, you know, like doing the food shop, going to the farmer's market. So And masks weren't mandatory. They are mandatory now. But, you know, at the time, the science is shifting and as it usually does. But so I was taking precautions, but um, started to feel unwell a couple of weeks later and it started with really itchy eyes for me and a sore throat and I thought it was allergies but the antihistamine didn't help and they believe that it can go in through the eyes right because it's sort of like particles my face was all swollen up I look like John Merrick you know <laughs> out of the elephant man <laughs> it wasn't pretty anyway so you know I um so long story short for about five weeks I was unwell and I had um chest pain breathing issues temperature and and sort of like really typical covid symptoms but then what happened is i sort of and then i eventually turned the corner you know what i've come to come to the outside and they're drilling can you hear that no can you hear, oh, oh okay good i'll stay no, no, if, no, if, if, if you need me to move inside i will it's 33 degrees now at nine o'clock in the morning it's the only time i can come outside it's crazy well and, and so at week five, I, th I think I started to turn a corner. My fever broke and I started to feel normal again. And I thought, you know, you know, when you've had like a flu or a bad cold or something, you think, oh, I'll just go for a walk and I'll start making that how I start introducing the movement again. Yeah. And so I did. But then what would happen is I'd go for a walk um, maybe two or three days in a row. And then I would start to get these really bad chest pains again and the chest pain felt like I was eating glass swallowed down by bleach it was like a burning cutting feeling in my chest and then an intense pressure and I couldn't get my breath I would walk upstairs and I'd be like coughing and panting and you can and I could take my oxygen with a, 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 a an oxygen meter that you can just 
caught on the end of your finger. And my yeah. oxygen was reduced down to the low 90s, but not dangerous. Like it just, you could tell my oxygen was low. And, um, and then I would have to go back to bed for two or three days. And then I'd feel better again and start and thinking, oh, this is it now. Now I'm better and start moving again and exercising. And literally from week five to now, that's what's happened to me. I'm like taking two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. Just when I think I'm getting better, these symptoms are just not going. And I think that the, the whole point of me sort of wanting to talk about it with like people like you who are like trying yeah. to raise awareness about health and women's health is that like I was spitting healthy going into this. Like, in fact, I was probably the healthiest I'd been for a long time and the fittest. And I was feeling really yeah. good at just about my overall health. And this literally has sidelined me for three months. And I, I, and I, also went through feelings of like, well, what's wrong with my immune system? Why have I got this and why can't I beat it? Like all of the, the questions that anyone else would have. And, and I think it's because we really don't know much about this virus. And it's getting deep into our systems, our, our body. And the, and the scientists are like dumbfounded by it. And there are hundreds of thousands of people like me, Meg, hundreds of thousands around the world uh -huh. that are getting mild to moderate symptoms and their symptoms just aren't going. Yeah, I know. And also it's like, you know, I'm hearing, I don't, don't want to like scaremonger you or, or anyone else, but, you know, people are saying, you know, that the damage on the lungs that they just don't know you know, how long it's going to last for, or is it going to be there forever? I mean, like you said, you just don't know. And that's why I know how fit and healthy you were, you know, and, and I know that that, you know, that it would have taken, um, you know, you probably would not catch the, co the common cold because you're just not that person. But for you to catch this, this is why I want people to be watching this, because as we know, we are open now. And I'm very happy for that. And I want the economy to get going. And I, I want it to go back to normal. But I still want people to be conscious of washing their hands, of wiping things down, wearing a mask, you know, just basically, you know, going all to the pub and getting really drunk, you know, um, and being oh together, God. which they're doing. Which yeah. I'm just like, are you, you know, you're mad because the minute someone is drunk, they, they don't know when they're falling on someone or hugging someone or whatever. But, you well, know. When you're inhibition call, right, Meg? When you're drunk, your inhibition leave you. I yeah, mean, that's the whole thing. That's why we do it. Yeah, <laughs> of course. That's, yeah. So then I'm just, you know, we've, we've, we've opened up now a few weeks and I just think it'd be, it was good to speak to you so people can get a proper insight of, you know, you know, how it affected you. I mean, you know, you, 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 uh, you started swimming yet? You have, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. So, so what's happening? Yeah, it is. And it's really interesting because so, so the background for anyone that doesn't like follow me is I'm a personal trainer, but I focus on strength training, especially I yes. talk about menopause and the importance of building bone density, creating stimulus to create, you know, strong bones as we move into you know, like post-menopause. So I've been doing strength training for decades now. This is like my third decade. Yeah. Um, like, you know, I've been into my 50s and, and it's so important. And so, um, but I haven't been able to do that. Like, because anything that's had my heart rate, or I mean, most people probably don't like really study their statistics when they work out, yeah. but it's sort of something I, I like to nerd out yeah. about. So I, I, I look at my heart rate when I'm working out and it seems that when my heart rate goes over like 110 um, 115, which is about 65-70% of my heart rate. It's yeah. just too. It's just too much exertion because obviously, when your heart rate goes up, you pump oxygen. That's the, how the system yeah. works. And, and your body is gasping for that oxygen. Yeah, exactly. And so what's happening is I find myself like out of breath and, and it doesn't feel painful at the time, but then there's like a knock on effect that happens like a few hours later. Um, and, and, and in fairness, now I'm at week 14 and um, I'm feeling better. And on my days, like today's a good day for me. And when I'm feeling good, I think I'm at like 80, 85%, which is, I'm, I'm okay with. But then 
like over the weekend, I, I wasn't doing very well. And the only thing I did was go for a walk. And, yeah. and I think the, the heat and the humidity aggravate it a lot. Oh, I can like it, really, yeah. it feels like it did when I had asthma as a young, as a teenager. Yeah. It sort of feels like I can't get my breath. Whereas I decided to go swimming and I don't even like swimming, but I just wanted that, the endorphins of some exercise. And I bet you maybe, did. <laughs> yeah, and maybe the, the cool temperature of the water maybe um, yeah. is, is, it isn't aggravating my lungs. So it's actually the only exercise I've been able to do that right now that feels good. So I'm sort good. of actively doing that. Good. But, you know, in the UK, um, you know, I watch actively what's happening in the UK because I've got family over there yeah. and I'm obviously concerned for my parents. Um, and so I watch what's happening over there compared to where I am in Texas, which you must blow your mind watching this from. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just insane. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, but like, you know, we have anti-maskers over here, which to me are the same as anti-vaxxers. They don't agree with the idea of wearing a mask and they think that it's against their personal freedom. It's a whole different argument over here. It's very political. I mean, I've had coronavirus and I still wear a mask and I do it for other people. I do it for respect and kindness. And I think that, um, like for me, the, the, the questions I had over why this happened to me is that, sorry, my family are just walking in. That's okay. Um, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that happened like to me is like I obviously questioned things about like my own health and why this happened and why I wasn't recovering. And what I've realized, and I think we all sort of know anyway, is that um, the virus doesn't um, discriminate. Anyone can get this. You can be fit and healthy or unfit and unhealthy and you still can get it. It doesn't make any difference. Probably my immune system was strong enough that it stopped me going into hospital. Like I didn't yeah, get that. You didn't have to get on a ventilator or be put into a coma, thank God. And exactly. Then, you know, and but then you come out and having to learn to walk again. And this is the other thing, people out there, you have to understand that when they say, you know, you're going into, um, you know, you're going into hospital because you're that bad. If they're inducing you in a coma and they are then putting you on a ventilator, the ventilator is breathing for you. And you're going to have to restart when you get off that ventilator, how to breathe, how to walk again. You're going to have muscle waste. It's a long, long road to recovery coming out of this. And I just think we, that's what I want people if they don't know. I'm not saying people do know, but I don't know whether they do understand that severity that when yeah. you actually are put in an induced coma and on a ventilator. So, but Meg, know, even, even moving on from that, like even if you weren't induced in a coma, bones falling over, um, even if you weren't. Um, on a ventilator, we know now, like, and there's re reports coming out from Italy talking about this as well, that people have had um, moderate, mild to moderate symptoms are not getting over this in two weeks. No. And um, there's fit and healthy people are not getting over this in two weeks. There are, are, we hear about the people that are asymptomatic and those that, you know, maybe take two weeks of symptoms and get better. And then those that are hospitalized and may or may not come home. But there's a big chunk of people in the middle, like me, where I fit in, yeah. that sort of have the symptoms and they're not nice and you're in bed and it doesn't feel good, but then it doesn't go. It gets deep into the system and it's really hard to get rid of. And so what another yeah. interesting thing that happened to me is that, you know, I my doctor continually checked my immune response with blood work and lots of other things. Um, and what happened is they found that my body had reactivated epsom bar virus and epsom bar virus is the same is the same as mono mono is like the kissing disease it's part of the herpes yeah we family. call it glandular fever <laughs> in the uk right. okay right so glandular fever, glandular so what, fever what, we call it that yeah right so what they think happens is that um coronavirus completely destroys the immune system when it gets in there and viruses like glandular fever if that's what it's called in the uk sit, sit in the body like dormant like latent in the body and it reactivates it so what happened with me is my epsom bar virus glandular fever reactivated so during this 
these um, like two month period when I was utterly exhausted and I was out of breath, the chances are I was also working against the glandular fever as well as the coronavirus. And they're finding that with hundreds of thousands of people as well, that it's activating these old, I didn't even know I'd had it, you know, like the, the virus. Yeah, I've had glandular fever so, and so is my daughter. And it is that fatigue that you get with it. I got it um, I, um, straight after I gave birth to Aeneas. Oh, and uh, they all thought I had postnatal depression because I just couldn't get out of bed. It would just be like, do you want to hold the baby? And I was like, oh, my God. I, you know, yeah. and then they were like, I was just like, no, I'm physically exhausted. And then we did blood tests and then it came back and then the doctor came back and he said, great news. You know, you've got, you've got this, you know, your white blood cells are counting right up there. Yeah. And then yes. they had it when she was a teenager, which is very, it's very common in teenagers. She was doing her exams, of course, and um, she had it. It usually happens when you're doing your A-levels and stuff, I think. She got glandular well, fever then. And yeah, I have, I have a friend who is an, an immunologist, and he studied this for his PhD, and he said that um, up to 90% of the population have this virus in their body that sits dormant. Lots of people get it asymptomatically, but when you're stressed for your exams yeah. um, and your body's under stress, it, it literally is sat waiting for that to happen so it can come out and play. Yeah. And so it makes sense that she got it through her exams. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a doctor, obviously, but I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, it? it does. Because, it, you know, there's a lot of kids, you know, when they're going through that, you know, that teenage sort of time, they get it. I mean, I got it when I gave birth, but I mean, I have no idea why. Yeah, and your, body, your body's stressed again then, Yeah, right? of course. Yeah, yeah, so it would have done, yeah. So, you know, what I um, one of the things that I sort of wanted to talk about as well, yeah. as far as this, is that, you know, I was very frustrated with, like, I went through a period of feeling like isolated and frustrated and also having an element of shame over this, you know, like why me, why did I get it? And why am I still not better? Like it was, it just really like, you know, we do this to ourselves. I, I, really I get that. But I, I've had that before. It's like, you know, when something happens, you think, you know, you're just thinking, God, everyone's thinking, Oh God, you know, it's happened. You know, when my house burned down, I was just like, you know, thinking, oh, God, what's everyone going to think? My house did, oh, yeah, of course it was going to happen to me. We just take on this rubbish, don't we, in our heads, thinking this. Yeah. You That's know. the thought. It was like, it's self-destroying. It just doesn't help at all. Um, but it's really interesting because when I started hearing about other people, and they're called long haulers, these long haulers like me that um, literally have the virus and it doesn't go away and it keeps coming back and coming back. Well, the symptoms just keep rearing their ugly head yeah. on the virus. Okay. Um, what I realized is that one, I wasn't alone, that there's lots and lots of people out there. So if anybody's listening and they want to know the name of these Facebook groups I'm in that I've got like 60,000, 100,000 people in, I can share that with them. That's been very helpful to hear. Yeah, their definitely talk. put those up after. Yeah, everybody. So yeah, go and to um, Fit and Chips, then Amanda will put them up after because yeah, yeah, you don't want to feel alone. It's great when you've got a community because, like you're saying, you know, week after week, it's, you know, it's, it's not something that people are just, some people are, but a lot of people, like you said, yourself is in this group where it's just going on and on and you know. not waking every morning thinking oh god I've got another week of this like because and it, and it was starting to drive me crazy and so in the end when I was listening to other people's stories and they were like saying four to six months before like well we had they didn't got to six months but it had been nearly six months and yeah. they were just starting to feel better so I sort of thought to myself well okay if that's what it's going to take if it has to be four to six months yeah. then I just need to I need to change the way I think about this. And so what I started doing is thinking, right, I can control certain things. I can try and move every day in a, in a purposeful way, but it doesn't have to be a workout. I've got to lose that mentality for the moment. Yeah. I, can control what, I can control what I eat. I can sort of focus on staying stress-free because that really matters. Uh -huh. And I can focus on improving my sleep because the coronavirus also messed with my sleep. Um, Did it? And it, I started, you have weird dreams? I heard... Yeah. Someone oh. told me they had, when they had the virus, they had the most uh, mental dreams that they've ever had in their life. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and mental, like, we, these really crazy dreams that felt lucid, like they, yeah. they felt like, like they were acid. Acid, all acid and weirdness, <laughs> and yeah, well, if you take I've it. never done acid. I knew you were yeah. going to say that, but yeah. <laughs> so, so, I'm so, dreams were like, just like beyond. You know, yeah, like, yeah they were crazy dreams, and um, and you sort of would I would sit up and wake up and be completely wide awake, but also with this intense pressure and inability to breathe, and then paranoia. I would be like paranoid, and it and it that went on. That literally has just stopped last week, and for the first time in three months, I've started sleeping through the night, and like the lack of sleep is brutal. I mean, I it's the first time I think I've ever really struggled with sleep issues, and yeah. Oh. So so like reframing how I'm like getting well on this has definitely helped me. Like like for I can't make this go away. Like I can do stuff to support it, but I can't stop like fix it because they you know. They don't know how to they fix it. They don't know, no, definitely not. So is there any, I mean, I, I, with your diet and is there anything that you've found or you're just trying to keep, you know, um, do you have an appetite? So I didn't, I didn't have an appetite in the beginning and so probably lost a little bit of weight in the beginning and then when I started to feel better, my appetite came back and I just wanted cake. So I probably put all my weight back on plus some. Like, and then that, that's just, I don't care. Like, I'm, yeah. but my appetite is fine now. I never lost the ability to taste or smell that wasn't one of my yeah i heard that one some people couldn't taste or smell but uh yeah and that that never happened to me but um but you know as far like i actually sort of want to talk about this with you as well because you know we hear about in the news that you know if you've got comorbidities like um diabetes or obesity or you maybe you know have um some type of metabolic disorder like insulin resistance that you're more likely to have severe symptoms um or if you're not taking like 100 micro 10 and um, thousand micrograms of vitamin d your immune system is going to be compromised and there was there's all this stuff out there yeah. and the first thing I, I, I want people to know that you can't feel shame over this right just if you have underlying conditions like don't feel ashamed if you get cor like the coronavirus because I get really frustrated that people are saying, well, why don't you try this? And have you tried to boost your immune system by oh. doing this? And I'm just like saying, that's not helpful. And you're actually making me feel ashamed because I've got this. Um, and we also know that like, um, you can't actually boost your immune system. It's not how the immune system works. You can support it by the food you eat and by your, you know, your, your stress management and sleep and exercise. But even for myself, I'd actually been to the doctors two weeks before I thought I got the virus and had my health, you know, blood work done. My immune response was good. My blood work was good. Yeah. I was as healthy as I was going to be. And I still got it. Yeah, so screw I mean, it, that's what we're saying. It doesn't pick or choose. And, and you know, people are like going, yeah, well, I'm going to go and do this IV. And I'm just like, yeah, but the, the vitamins on the IV, you just wee most of them out and they don't last. You're not there for the next, you know, maybe for the next five days. But, you know, other than that, you know, spending a fortune on it. Even if you take hyperdoses of vitamins and there's no, one, they may be dangerous to you. Two, you might just pee them out because most of them are water-based. Yeah. And two, um, and, the, and the last one, thirdly, um, there's no evidence it's going to help you. But even if you do take those, you still can get it. This is an yeah, airborne yeah, virus you yeah. can get from talking to somebody. Yeah, that's um, what I mean. It's yeah, just and so talking it's, after yourself and like you say, not feeling ashamed and, you know, just it's all about number one, you and your family. And so none of your family caught it off you. So my husband didn't get anything. Um, he'd been really sick in January and had a cough that lasted like eight weeks afterwards. And he, but he got tested for flu. Yeah. But we wonder now maybe if he gave me, I like to think that he gave me it just so I have someone to blame. Yeah. My, both, of my, <laughs> both of my kids were sick for a week. One of them had, they both had GI issues, you know, like the runs and stuff. Yeah. And one of them got like, yeah, like the dreams, like the paranoia and, and stuff like I yeah. had. But that was only for a week. So really, um, no, they were, they were fine and, and, yeah. Um, it's See, that's but, what but, I mean. you're in a household you're together you're close together it just sort of randomly picks that's what i mean which is so random it's not like oh my god 
I've got, you know, chicken pox. We all put the kids in one room because we all want them to get chicken pox at, at the age of two or three. And they all leave with chicken pox, you know, or, or you know, like this. This picks and chews. This Do you know, though, they're doing that. They're doing that here. They're having coronavirus party. And I don't know if you've got it on the news over there. They had a coronavirus party here, you know, where they knew one person had it. So they all went and it was in Texas, of course. Um, and then the one guy died. He went because he was like, yeah, I'm going to go and get it. And then he died two days later. So, you know, it's just stupid to not take this seriously. I just don't yeah. understand that. And clearly I'm more sensitive, right? Because I've had it and I've struggled with it. I mean, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. But I yeah, think that the whole, point, the whole point of me talking is to say that, you know, I feel like that I got this when I was in a good position, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like physically and mentally and stuff, and I've still struggled. And I'm probably still alive because I am fit and healthy. That's the positive I'm looking yeah. at from this. Um, but don't be blase about this and don't be inconsiderate to other people who you may pass this on to who won't survive and won't get through this um yeah. it's really really important to talk about that yeah that's why i wanted you on today because i just want people to because what happens is it's like you know all of a sudden it's we we i mean there is still a lot of deaths i think there was 119 deaths or something yesterday we're over forty four thousand in the uk you know, it's a lot, but we, I do want the economy to go back. I do want, you know, things to open up, but not, but just for people to, 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 to take responsibility and not be stupid. Do you know what I mean? Please wear your mask and put your gloves on and have your hand sanitizer because when things need to open up because the small businesses are going under, John Lewis has just closed eight stores. Uh, it's hard on it. It's really hard. But what I've I seen mean, over here... are different states, aren't you? So <laughs> is Texas, are there, is, is your state, um, you know... In a state? Is, do you have a good, whatever you call them, is your state, um, it's quite a wealthy state, Texas, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. So, so, yeah. so te Texas is Republican, right? Yes. So it's, a, it's a, and the state governor, Greg Abbott, I'm going to try not to get too political here because I yes, don't have a political just, voice yeah, here. Yeah, no, I don't I'm not, I'm not American. I know, but I just, because I see, you know, Louisiana and the, the mayor of, of, of New York, and I've seen lots of, you know, I did go on to a lot of American stuff, and I was just thinking, you know, some of them, the poor states were like, you know, getting no help, really. Well, the, the, what happens is the state governor makes the mandate. So um, Andrew Cuomo, the New York um, yeah. state governor, is the one we saw on the TV all the time. Like, we yes. were all Cuomo sexuals. We're all Cuomo sexuals, weren't we? We thought he, like, yeah. he was so good. Yeah. And he, he, he made hard decisions, and, yeah. and, um, and he's opening back up. And New York is literally one of the only of two states now that are in a position where they can slowly open back up. And when you, so when people are saying, yeah, he's lovely. And he is. Like he's, but my state governor is a Republican and he's like a mini Trumpette. And so like he is refusing to shut the economy back down. He's only just mandated us wearing masks. He's taken away the responsibility of, the, um, each individual city from the mayor and the county judges he's removed so now they have no authority to do anything and I'm in Houston and our ICU beds are running out like it's doctors are on the TV crying because they're having to turn away 30 year old people who are not going to survive tonight like the Florida governor somebody else said it's exactly the same and it's heartbreaking and so like I, I want the economy to open too but what what um, the comparison between Texas and New York has shown is that Texas shut down and then opened up too quickly. Too quick. and, yeah. um, and what's happening now is that, that we're going to have to shut back down and it's going to have more impact on the economy than if they'd have just done it. Like, just like with the, the mask, system. with the two metres, kept everything, you know, pubs, restaurants, everything closed, just, you know... The local, there's, somebody, you know, there's somebody on here saying that she's a she's a nurse in um, Florida, and I can't even imagine. I can't I mean, even Florida imagine. Florida, it's it's gone really bad, hasn't it? Spiked really bad, I think, back in Florida in the last 
few days, I think I've read. I yes. think Florida is gone. I think California has spiked again. They're having to close, I think, they have. skins and facials and hair. I think all that beauty hair and stuff like that. I think they've beauty had to hair. close. Your hair can work, for Christ's sake. I know, you know. look I at can... me. I used to be blonde. <laughs> but people are dying in the hospital and people want to get their nails done. I'm just yeah. like... I know. I, I don't think... anything. I've had no Botox, no fillers, no roots done, no nails. And, you know, and for me, it's been oh, very oh, refreshing. I've discovered, I've discovered these, right? So these yeah. are like nails. You stick them on. They're not nails. They're like a wrap. Yeah, I've like heard a piece that, of paper. though. You stick them on. That's yeah. two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. they I've last. I've actually gone them. all natural. Look, really natural. Look at that. Okay. Just my own nails. I'm not good at all that sort of thing. That's the one thing that I'm just not very good at. You know, sort of dye. You know, I'm watching my friends perming their lashes and dyeing their eyebrows and doing all this. I'm I'm not one of those girls. I'm a bit look of a good. British girl, so I'm no, just. No, you look good, and and I'm the same. I haven't had my head done in ages and stuff, and I put a bit of makeup on for you come in yeah, and I wash my face. Makeup 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 makeup. Now as well, <laughs> I put makeup on and make myself look a bit better today. But I think you know when I'm looking at the UK, and um, I mean. Maybe I'm biased because I am British and I still feel very British. I know that there's, there's a few people out there that want to be rebellious, but I think for the most part, um, the British do respect their um, government or at least the scientists yeah, and they we, listen yeah. to them and, and say, okay, so they're suggesting this, we'll follow the guidelines. Whereas there's, there's, there's a full camp over here that are just like, I do not want to do what I'm told to do because I have my own personal freedom and I don't believe in it. And they're yeah. literally denying science. And, I, and I'm thinking, the scientists sit in their little places and never ever come out and talk. And they've now come out to tell us that we're in a pandemic and they're giving us their decades worth of experience and expertise. And they are experts. Yeah. Listen to them, please. But they want, yeah. and for me now, I don't see an end to this, like in Texas and Florida, and it's actually demoralizing. Yeah, I mean, I, it, see, I see an end in the UK. I can see a light at the end of our tunnel. Yeah, I mean, for us, I mean, I'm not going to go on holiday this year. I, you know, I don't need to be flying off. I'm going to stay in the UK, maybe put the money back into, you know, the economy here. Just, you know, do, you know, I'm going to go to Norfolk to, to my dad's house. And, you know, what's one year, with, you know, without traveling, it's not going to make any difference. And, you know, I've got the dog and, you know, and I just think, you know, it's best just to um, just stay put, really. And if we can put the money back into the English economy, have a seaside holiday or whatever, why not, you know, um, please put it back in, you know, if you can, I would suggest anyway, you know, I know Thank that our weather you. isn't brilliant, but we did have the best weather when we were in lockdown. I mean, we had yes, I every day we went for walks. I mean, it was magical. If we hadn't have had the sun, I think mental health would have really fallen in this country. But I think because of the sun and the walks and these Insta Live and with the help of Zooms and different meetings, you know, because I think our next big thing in the UK is going to be mental health because people are really struggling, you know, not having yeah. contact and not being able to speak or, you know, to have a hug or, you know. It, yeah. And, you know, for those, people living alone, for those people living alone, I agree. Somebody's just said on there she works in retail and she – there's that people don't give a damn. But, I mean, it might be better when the masks come in place on the 24th for, for retail staff because I recently yes. went to my my local pharmacy or chemist and there's a woman without a mask on there and it's it's day at law now. You have to wear one. Yeah, wait, wait, and I asked her, Yeah, go on, sorry, go on. All I was going to say is I asked the cashier how she felt about this and they have the plexi screens and they have the masks on and she said, we hate it. We, we literally think they don't care about us. And I think maybe this woman forgot her mask, right? Maybe she um, has a health condition, but I don't buy that, by the way. 
because there's people with cystic fibrosis that are coming out saying we're wearing a mask. We have reduced lung capacity. We just like wear one. But my yeah. um, my point is, it's one of the most respectful things you can do to the retail staff who have to go Absolutely. back to work. Absolutely, I hear this. Uh, I listen to LBC every day. I love LBC. I'm a huge fan and. Um, you know, I, I hear shop people and ringing in saying, you know, I work in the supermarket, we're not supplied with masks, it's, you know, really bad, it's, you know, it's, you know, but, I, but we are, it, it's, you know, you won't be able to go into a shop unless you're wearing a mask. I don't know when that happens from, I think it's any day very soon. Here. 24th. It's the 24th, yeah. yeah? Well done, you know more than me. I know that, yeah. yeah, so we have to wear masks. We When we go into a shop where we do everything, and I think, you know, it's, it's you know, public transport, whatever, you need to wear the mask. You know, either and, way. Um, because they had all these stories, didn't they? Scientifically, it was um, um, only people who had it, you know, it, it, they weren't giving it to someone else. But I was just thinking, surely if I'm wearing a mask, it's going to help me a little bit not catching it. So I would wear a mask, you know. It's the, you, must have seen the meme, you must have seen the meme going around of, like, the guy peeing. It's like even in a cloth mask, if one guy pees on another one, it's going to hit him. But if you both wear a mask, like, if you both pee yeah. on each other... It'll... Of course. And <laughs> I totally, yeah, I'm up. I, I just think, you know, let's just all be sensible. Let's wear a mask. You know, it helps. I mean... You know, you forget that the little things that you forget, it's just like, you know, you're all like this and then you're doing your credit card, but then you're tapping that number in and, you know, how many people have touched that day? With the zebra crossing, when you're I'm tapping a, that. I'm a best toucher. So right? am I. And I'm, I'm pretty convinced I got this by doing this to my oh, face. I and have as well. And having a mask on stops you touching your face as well. I, I actually touch think my it face helps all the time. I'm, I'm being conscious not to do it, but I'm always like that. So you're always. not thinking like looking at looking at like a holistic way of dealing with this virus. Is I think that things can go back like opening up and stuff, and I think it's really important that we do that, and that we can do it in a different way. Like I've seen it happen here when yeah. they first got the job, and it and it wasn't so aggressive. That you can support local, you can be yes. respectful. Sanitizing your hands, keeping your distance, wearing a mask. Absolutely. From a personal point of view, you can do everything you can do to be as healthy as possible. Walk every day, eat well, keep yes. your stress down, sleep as much as possible, have connections with other people, whether it's via Zoom, which I know we're all getting yes. sick of, but like, uh, I just yes. feel like if we chip away at lots of little things, we yes. can make this, I think so. Yeah, and I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I was walking my 10,000 steps a day. Um, then I was doing a live 10 a.m. with a guy called Richie Swan. He's done it free at 10 a.m. every single day. I think this is week 19, and he's done Happy it. Happy watching him. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. You've heard your back though, right? Yeah, so I've been doing him. I haven't this week because I've, you know, put my back out, which I've really missed it. But he's been great. He's done it at 10 a.m. It's like in your house. It's like great. It's, you know, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to go back to the gym. I've got just as fit. I'm like being at home. Got some bands. Got some small. Actually, I was going to ask you about weight. What size kettlebell do you think I should get? Well, it depends what he's making you oh, no, do, of course. And he just doesn't do that. I was just going to get on YouTube and do some kettlebell moves. But I see you yes. got a blue one, but I don't know how heavy it was. That's like 65 heavy, pounds. Isn't it? it is, but I obviously like feel like I'm going to go back to being a beginner again. I think if you get any type of moderate weights, like so for a dumbbell to start with, something that yes. you can lift overhead and take down to the floor. Yeah. So dumb, a pair of dumbbells, I'd maybe get a, like a, a 10 pound weight and a 15 pound okay, weight. Yeah, and, from ten, a kettle, yeah. and then a kettlebell, maybe one that's like 15 pound is quite good because what kettlebells... Is it, what's, what's key, 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 key. Oh, eight kilograms, about eight kilograms for, eight, I forgot we're on my fitness weight. Weight. So you could, I would take, I would get a four and an eight. I would, if you were going to get a couple of sets of dumbbells, get a set of four um, kilogram and eight and maybe an eight um, 
um, kettlebell if you can. They're all sold out over here. There's none left. Well, you I know they are them. here. It's like, you know, it, they're gold dust and the prices are ridiculous. But I do know that I just want to bring some weights in in the next few weeks. So I was just thinking, what should I get? I don't want to spend, I don't want to buy a hundred. So I thought if I get one kettlebell and two sets of dumbbells, do so you think I should get a four and an eight? Yeah, and you know why? Because here's the thing. If you find that they're too light, you can do things to make it harder without increasing the weight. There's lots of different ways you can yes. adapt an exercise. So, for example, slowing an exercise down. Imagine, let's do an overhead press. Imagine you do them like really quick like yes. this and because and they don't feel anything. Well, then, if you really slow them down and keep tension yes. in them, or all of a sudden it becomes they harder. It all works, yeah. Or if you take less rest in between exercises, that can make it harder. If you change your body position, that can make it harder. So mm -hmm. adapting, adapting things, like for example, if you're doing a squat with the 15 pound, or the eight kilogram yeah. weights or, or the kettlebell, if that starts to feel too easy for you you could add a little plyometric jump at the bottom you could come up and jump yeah, slightly or you could drag your feet so it's almost like a single leg one right there's so many things you can do without having to invest so much money yeah into that's it. what i mean i didn't want to you know go my whole range i just wanted maybe two dumbbells and one kettlebell just to although buying weights is like buying a lipstick you buy one and you're like oh and what would we like if i bought another one <laughs> Oh, yeah, next minute, no, the cupboard will be full, won't it? As I just thought, I'm not being, or, I mean, I went to, um, I, I wasn't a member of a fancy gym. I have a free membership at a, 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 a really good gym, which they gave me a lifetime. So I'm very lucky about that. But it's just over in Chelsea. So it's quite, you know, I don't go all the time. But I was just yeah. going to the... I was going to the local hospital, uh, the Royal Free, where all the doctors and nurses train. <laughs> and I was there. Yeah, and it's for the doctors and nurses, but they, you know, allow. And I was laughing to myself thinking, God, I'm being in here surrounded by, you know, all the doctors, all the nurses, everybody's working in the Royal Free. You know, because you That's go early in the morning. And then I was just a bit like, I think I won't go back to that um, for a little I bit. Have, I have not. I don't want to go back to the gym in any type of a hurry, but I do have stuff I can do at home. Yeah, anyway. I know you I mean, can do. Yeah, you can do all stuff at home. And I think I will do as well. I just think gym is a little bit like lots of droplets, you know, people, machine. I mean, it is, you know, there is going to be droplets flying around and sweat and stuff because that's, well, that's one of the businesses. That's one of the businesses over here, probably in the UK, that's taken the hit, like especially the small boutique gyms. And I feel yeah. sorry for them. A lot, of, a lot of my friends have lost businesses, but they've like slipped it and have now become online coaches and they're doing well. So yeah, we're adapting, right? But the mental health side of it that you were talking about, like, I know. was one of the things do is like to move every day and get that you're like someone's been this yeah right? like get the get the endorphins going and for me like not being able to exercise for months was one of the hardest things and I was desperate so I just kept pushing and pushing myself to just even go for a walk and oh. and it was just my downfall and so but but generally yeah, just, just listen to your body but like you say with mental health you know like lying in bed you know set your alarm for like eight or whatever i mean you know don't have to get up at the crack of dawn like i i do but i'm not at the moment but um you know i think it's good just to get that routine so then just put your tracksuit on get out and go for a walk and if you can do yeah. like i mean i walked an hour and a half and i was doing like um nine thousand steps so, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, in the morning, if you just go for a walk in the morning and then, then maybe another one in the afternoon or whatever, it would just that routine, you know, mentally we like routine. And also the minute you're in nature, look at the trees, make sure that you look around. And if you're in Regent's Park or you're near a park, look at the birds. And, you know, at this, you know, that this particular time, you've got thrushes and robins and, and um, black birds and finches and there's all sorts of amazing british garden birds out there which i've not seen for a long time in the in you know, well, you in know the, not, we were now the, noticing things like that yeah That's the difference. Uh, you know in London, yeah i don't know whether it was because it was amazing when we had no airplanes no pollution oh my god the air the smell i mean when it came a ghost town 
it was pure heaven. I've never, you know, I was just looking at the color of the sky and there was just not one airplane. There was no traffic on the road. I mean, you know, it. I noticed the noise pollution and the pollution. It was within two weeks, it was clear, crisp, yeah. clear. And now it, yeah. I mean, it's not. But of course, you know, I choose to live in London. So, you know, this is something I put up with. But it was... But I do, but I do believe that, like, actually, um, you know, like, um, if we if we do have to go back in lockdown, any of us, or if yeah. we do have to sort of change, um, you know, our protocols, that, like, just trying to purposefully move every day. I mean, I talk about this before I got sick anyway, but making your movement purposeful every day, whether that's walking or riding your bike or going swimming, anything, just make it part of something that you do, and it doesn't have to be complicated. But just for your own, like overall health and well-being and your mental health it's like it's so important yeah and yes we're looking at birds now <laughs> we're not i know birds. look at me here. i'm looking at but yeah i'm like wow wow you know i'm starting to see things because before i would just walk with the dog and walk around the park try and get it over with oh my god i need to yeah give him 40 minutes yeah. to, to, this has given me the time where I can just walk for an hour and a half and all round and, you know, and they also didn't, the Royal Parks, it was amazing. They decided not to trim back everything. They let them go wild and it was no just place. glorious. I think they've still left it. Hopefully, I think lots of people have done a petition by saying, you know, where the main green is, but within the trees and on the outskirts, you know, there was all this like cow parsley and all this amazing, you know, weeds well, and gosh. everything and loads of birds and seeds. And it was just, you know, it was great to see the Royal Parks are actually very natural, you know, and not, you know, precisely cut back short. Yeah, we appreciate nature and i hope we don't lose that you know i hope we learn from this if we don't learn from this as humans then we're, we suck right know, but definitely. like we, we appreciate the smaller things in life right that's Absolutely. what we yeah about. so it's all about like you say we know that exercise and mental health everything goes together and yes. eating right and feeling right but i'm looking at the time because i'm don't we only get <laughs> one hour on insta or insta okay. and, and, IGTV. and this is going to be put on an igtv next week because most a lot of people are back at work now so they can't do this so then i'll make this into an igtv and it will go on next week and then we yeah. a lot of people can follow it and then they can go to you to uh find the facebook groups and I'm wishing you all my love in the world, Amanda, and get strong and well. I know you will. And I'm on my way. I'm making I know, progress. I see. You're on your way. And thank you so much for doing this. I thank really appreciate you. it. Thank you.